Hey guys, uh, I know I just suddenly started uploading Lost Ark videos out of nowhere. I haven't been uh, very diligent with my YouTube content lately because I obviously don't play WoW anymore. I haven't played in a while. Um, I just started playing Lost Ark here and there and I played it right at the beginning but then I got bored because like there's no ranked out so I was just spamming regular matches and then I quit for like two months until and then ranked came out and uh, I didn't even play right when ranked came out because uh, I had already kind of, you know, gotten into other things and just checked it off. But then I decided to come back and start playing uh, ranked and stuff. And uh, I mean, it's been it's been pretty fun. I just kind of wanted to give, I guess, a little synopsis of the game for people who aren't too familiar, maybe interested in trying it, just to give you my opinion about it and some basic information. Um, since I know 100% of people that follow my YouTube channel are strictly following it for WoW content. Um, I don't know if there will be more WoW content in the future, just an FYI. Um, I usually come back and play every new expansion in WoW just to try to, you know, see what it's about. Um, but obviously the past like eight years worth of expansions have been pretty disappointing overall, so um, at least on the PvP front and uh, compared to the past. so. Uh, forgive me if I end up not trying the new one. I probably will try it a little bit, but uh, don't get your hopes up for a bunch of WoW content in the future, even. But um, for anybody that's interested in, in this game at all, um, if you're wondering if it's like a huge time commitment or anything, uh, to get into the PvP of the game, you don't have to do much at all. It takes a few hours before you are ready to get into PvP, and it's always fair in terms of gear and stats. Gear and stats and all that are irrelevant in PvP. Everything is totally normalized. So you uh, do not have to grind. You don't have to keep up with any PvE stuff. You don't have to touch any PvE. You can basically uh, quest, like do the first quest and like leveling bullshit at the beginning for like, I don't know, three hours tops, I'd say. Uh, once you get to the first like main city in the quest line, then you can pretty much queue up for PvP, even at like level 26 or 27. So there's no commitment whatsoever. You can just level for a few hours and then do nothing but PvP for the rest of your time in Lost Ark. So for those of you who are interested in that, you know, people that probably work a lot, have families, whatever, and you just want to get some PvP without having to do tons of grinding, it's a pretty good option. I will say though, um, the PvP in this game although can be very gratifying, it can also be incredibly frustrating at the same time. But most good games have a very like high, high, low, low kind of dynamic. You know, like when you're winning and you're owning, it feels amazing. But when you're on the losing side of it, it feels horrendous. Kind of like League of Legends, you know, like League of Legends feels so good when you're just, you're getting fed and you're popping off and carrying. Uh, it's similar in this game. You can have a game where you do 600,000 damage and only take 180,000 damage and you feel like a god. And then the next game flip those numbers because you're, you know, the match was just so one-sided that you just got bullied the whole time. 2v1 and 3v1 and crap like that. So it has high highs and low lows, but I, I think that in general is what makes a game good overall. So... There's a lot of classes to choose from. Most of the, or a lot of the classes aren't out yet for EU and NA because the game's been out in Korea and Russia for, I guess, a couple of years before it came to us. So they, they have released one new class so far since launch, which is this class you're seeing here, originally named Lance Master. I don't know why they rename everything on, uh, just about every class gets a rename when it comes to these regions. It's kind of lame, so instead of Lance Master, they call it Glavier. And like, there's a demon class, and uh, you know, you can transform into a demon, and that is normally called Demonic, and in this one it's called Shadow Hunter XX69420. You know, it's kind of cringe. But uh, yeah, so there's a decent bit of classes to choose from, and uh, some of the classes that are unreleased yet are pretty cool. I, I look forward to the Scouter class, if you YouTube, check it out, or like Google it. Scouter, Lost Ark. It's a pretty cool class. The class I'm playing is Gunslinger. Every class has what they call an identity skill and then an ultimate, as we're used to calling it from other games. They call it an Awaken in this game. Uh, but, you know, everybody just calls it ult for the most part. Um, so everybody has, like, an ultimate and a uh, class identity. The class I'm playing here is Gunslinger. It doesn't have uh, an identity the way other classes do. Usually the identity is... 
I don't know, something that empowers you. Like, uh, the Shadow Hunter class can fill, fill it up from doing damage and stuff throughout a match, and once it's full, you can transform into a demon, and you get different abilities temporarily. Uh, for Gunslinger, you have three weapons, and you weapon swap, as you can see. You have the pistols, which is like your main mobility, uh, kind of utility set of weapons. It's not for big damage. It's mostly for catching targets in CC, staggering them and throwing a freeze grenade on them and then comboing them. And the rifle and the shotgun are more your damage dealers. So, uh, Gunslinger, I think, probably has the steepest learning curve, just the muscle memory. Uh, like, I've played a bunch of other classes here and there, and the hardest thing so far was just memorizing and getting the muscle memory down for weapon, sw weapon swapping, because you can go left and right. Uh, so sometimes that messes with your brain. You're like, okay, if I have pistols out, left is shotgun, right is, is uh, rifle. But sometimes you want to go from rifle to shotgun and, you know, you build up the muscle memory to go rifle, back to pistol, you know, and then shotgun, back to pistol, and then every once in a while you try to mix it up, and then you brain fart. I'm sure you've caught that in some of my videos already where I brain fart, and I'm like, uh, wrong weapon. So it definitely has, like, a, a little bit of a steep learning curve, but everything has its, you know, mastery, you know? The more you play anything, the better you're gonna get. So I guess I'll just give some pros and cons about the game. Uh, pros, uh, pretty fun, just general PvP combat. You know, it's sort of like League of Legends, sort of. The 3v3 kind of is a little reminiscent of WoW mixed with League of Legends, let's say, uh, for lack of a better comparison. Uh, this mode you're seeing here is like a 1v1v1 uh, team elimination. So sometimes, you know, you go in there and you just try to kill all three players by yourself one at a time. And uh, it can be a pretty fun mode, but ranked is only 3v3 and it's only solo queue. You can queue with your friends in Team Deathmatch 3v3, whatever game mode. You can queue with your friends, but only in the casual mode. If it's uh, ranked 3v3, you can only queue solo, which is good and bad. Obviously, the good part is, is the solo queue means you can log in and queue anytime you want. You don't need to get your team together. You know, that's one of the frustrating parts about a game like WoW, is you really can't do anything. Uh, unless all your friends are on, you gotta schedule it and stuff like that. It, it can be hard with life and a job and stuff like that. So, solo queue is great. Although, I will say the matchmaking system in this game is pretty horrendous. Would be a con. So, although I consider solo queuing a pro because it's convenient, uh, the con is the matchmaking being a little crap. But, I'll, I'll get into that later, why, why it's crap. Uh... Another thing too, you'll notice this is an old clip. This is this clip right here is like, you know, right when I first started playing the game, and this is like I think in the first three days of early access, if I recall correctly. So you might notice the resolution is quite a bit different, right? How come there's the black bars on all the other clips, and this one has full screen? Well, at the beginning I didn't know, but you have to set the resolution to like 21 by 9 because in the 21 by 9 you actually get a larger field of view by a lot from left to right. So that is a con for sure. It, 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 you get used to it, but I find it annoying because, I mean, who has like an ultra wide monitor, right? Not a whole lot of people, I wouldn't think. It honestly seems like it would be miserable to have such a large screen. Like, do I gotta turn my freaking head just to see both sides? So, you pretty much have to play in the 21 by 9 resolution, otherwise you're missing a lot of field of vision, which is obviously kind of a big deal, because if you can see your enemy and they can't see you, that's quite an advantage. Now, even if everybody plays in 21 by 9 people's camera angles are different. Uh, each team has a different camera angle, which is super weird. So, my left to right width, you know, in like field of view is different from the enemy's left to right, so it's kind of hard to tell if an enemy can even see you or not. If somebody's far to my left or right and I can see them all the way at max range on my screen, I don't even know if they can see me usually. Uh, th I, there's probably a way to learn it and figure out, you know, exactly how mirrored the views are, but I don't really bother with that, you know, trying to figure that out. I just play the game. But yeah, so you have to adjust the monitor and get used to the black bars on the side of your screen and things being a little bit smaller. You get used to it pretty quick. I was pretty pissed when I realized everyone in my Twitch chat was you know, explaining it to me and saying how it's you get like 33% or 31% more field of view if you set it to 21 by 9. So not gonna lie, I was pretty upset about that right off the bat. I was like, I don't like change, you know, I like my full screen everything, but 
Uh, I got used to it, so it's fine. But I still think it's a con, because it's slightly annoying. So, back to the matchmaking. Solo queue is nice, because again, uh, you don't have to worry about metas, you know, too much. I mean, metas sort of still exist with, like, which classes are popular. Some classes are just weaker than others, obviously. But it is nice that there's not a strict meta, you know? Like, it's not like World of Warcraft, where RMP is 50% of, of the queues whenever you queue at a certain rating, you know? You're not going to see these pre-made teams. It's going to be mixing and matching. Now... That being said, the downside to the matchmaking in this game, overall I think solo queue is a reasonable system, you know, because eventually, you know, if you're good enough, you're going to even out at a certain rating, right? Like, sure, there's plenty of games where, well, you can't choose your comp, you can't choose your teammates. Yes, you are going to queue up and get an unlucky comp, an unlucky matchup, you know, you're going to fight, you know, a very specifically good comp versus your mismatched weird garbage comp. And that happens sometimes, but that's just like League of Legends or any really solo queue game that isn't, you know, like an FPS where you can't just like ace the entire team by yourself easily. So there is frustration in that, and then the, uh, I'd say the more frustrating part is apparently, from what I've read, the way the matchmaker works is, and I don't know, I haven't confirmed if this is entirely true, but it kind of seems like it is, apparently queues pop in intervals of like a, a minute and 40 minute and 40 seconds uh it doesn't like have a random amount of time where it tries to find the best matchup based on mmr it just pops every minute and 40 seconds and it's going to take whatever the best matchup it can find at that moment so you get some really weird games where you have like a 2800 player on your team a 2300 player and then a 1400 rated player and sometimes that 1400 rated player is like smurfing on like a new account or a different region or something and so sometimes you get lucky in that regard but yeah you get some really weird matchups sometimes and it can be very frustrating so i'd say the biggest complaint that everybody that plays ranked in this game has is the matchmaking system but it being solo queue and you not having to worry about like a strict meta where everybody's playing the same compositions you know i the solo queue system's good but the matchmaking system could definitely use some tweaks. Another con I would say is that there are definitely some hackers. This game here, the enemy gunslinger, is swiftness hacking. There's a hack where... So your stats are kind of preset. I mean, you can choose your stats in PvP, in your little PvP template. But pretty much everybody runs 750 swiftness, which is the max. Um, and then you put 250 points elsewhere. So there is a hack where you can greatly exceed that 750 swiftness cap. And this gunslinger on the enemy team is doing that. He's like super cracked out. I didn't notice it the first time I fought him. I thought he was like lagging or something. But yeah, there's definitely some hackers in this game. Their anti or their easy anti-cheat system is, you know, like every other anti-cheat system. It just doesn't do anything. <laughs> So, it's not like a huge epidemic of hackers, though. There's not like a trillion hackers. You don't see them every day you queue or anything like that. I've probably seen five or six total. Maybe some I didn't recognize. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes they're swiftness hacking in, in a very subtle way. You know, instead of having 750 cap, they have like a thousand. And it's like not a massive, massive difference. But I mean, swiftness is a pretty important stat. So even juicing it a little bit is pretty huge. I mean, there's some buffs that you can get in PvP in this game. A couple of classes will give you a swiftness buff and make it like your all your attack speeds and everything faster. It's very noticeable when you get a, a, like a swiftness buff. You're like, holy shit, I'm cracked out. You feel like you're cheating when you get it. So people who just hack and get that all the time, even if it's more subtle, it's a pretty big advantage. So I've probably not noticed some people hacking. Uh, like this gunslinger here, I didn't notice he was hacking until my teammate pointed it out. So that's frustrating, but it's not like, you know, it's not new to gaming. Every game has their cheaters, you know? Like, I mean, you shoot in World of Warcraft, Warlords of Drainer, it was like literally standard for RBGers to be kickbotting and crap like that. Like, it was normal for anybody above like 1900. Literally, if you applied for an RBG group in World uh, Warlords of Drainer, they would ask you if you are botting straight up and if you weren't botting they wouldn't invite you it's disgusting uh so it's pr it's not that bad in this game so far but yeah if you like league of legends style you know isometric view kind of pvp decision making skill shots stuff like that but you also like 3v3 arena combat still you know then i'd suggest checking the game out it's very low commitment Literally, you, you make your account or whatever, and then you create a character, you level for like two to three hours, 
and then you can basically just queue PvP forever and not have to do anything. I don't really do the PvE every once in a while. If I'm bored, I feel like mowing down waves of monsters, I'll do a couple of the basic PvE things. But overall, I don't really give a crap about PvE or my gear score or anything like that. There's also a way to boost other characters to max level. Um, if you, like, do some of the actual level 50, if you get a character to level 50 and do some of the level 50 world quests and stuff, technically you can get these power passes in other ways, uh, knowledge transfer as they call it as well. There are ways to, like, power level other classes, but that's only really if you want to PvE. It's a good way to, like, boost characters to PvE, but if you want to just PvP, your best bet is to simply spend two to three hours leveling a character. That's it. Two to three hours, you do that main story. It's like the orange quest icon. It'll say main story in the quest journal. You just do that until you get to the first Lunterra Castle or whatever it's called. And once you get there, in a couple hours, uh, you can pretty much just do nothing but queue up PvP forever. If that's what you want to do. Somebody commented on uh, one of my more recent videos and he said, uh, Nobody cares about pay to win Lost Ark. Just for the record, there is no pay to win in PvP. There is some pay to win shit. I mean, it's more like paying for convenience, I guess. You can speed up the PvE, you know, item level grind. Because, you know, the PvE is like, you do the content, you get a bunch of resources, and then you empower your gear. That's what PvE is in this game. Don't get me wrong, some of the encounters that I've seen... Uh, are pretty next level stuff, so if you like PvE, I'm sure it's fun. I just don't give a shit about PvE ever. But just so you're aware, if you're worried about it, there is no pay to win in PvP whatsoever. Nothing in PvE, none of your gear, nothing. You can go into PvP basically naked, although don't unequip your weapon because then you can't use abilities. But you can go in naked with just a weapon on and your stats are exactly the same as everybody else's. So there is zero imbalance in pvp in terms of gear or how much you pve there's definitely some imbalances in terms of class power but you know that's kind of expected i would say the only remotely possible uh, limiting factor when it comes to pvp is to use your awakening ability or your ultimate whatever you want to call it uh you get to use it one time per arena match one single time everybody gets to use their awakening right they're somewhat powerful. They're not like super insane or anything, but if, they can be pretty impactful if you you know catch two or three people in it at the right time. Um, the o only limiting factor though is that to use the awakening, it requires a reagent. It's some sort of crystal. I forgot what it's called, like a chaos abyss crystal or some shit. And those cost 250 silver. Now 250 silver is not a lot. Um, I basically do almost zero PvE besides, you know, just a little bullshit here and there, but um, I've got millions of silver because I got all, you get login bonuses, like a daily login bonus, and uh, sometimes the login bonus is 300,000 silver. So I haven't had any problem with silver, but if you have a bunch of alts, you're just really into the game and you want to try a whole bunch of classes and you want to stock up on the awakening sh shards on every class, I could imagine that you could run out if you're spamming games. If you're playing like eight plus hours a day just spamming games and you just made your account and you haven't gotten all those login bonuses over time to get a bunch of silver and you're not doing PvE, you might run into a problem with being able to use your awakening. Again, it hasn't been a problem for me, it's just something that might be at the beginning. But once you play long enough and you get all those free silver, you know, chunks from the game itself, uh, it shouldn't really be a problem. If you're curious what Gunslinger Awaken is, everybody has two Awakens, but uh, this is the one I'm using right here. Boom. Projectile hits somebody and then does a big explosion. Kind of reminds me of Graves from League of Legends. It'll eventually explode on its own if it travels far enough, but it'll basically explode on impact and spread. So, but yeah, I find it weird that they require you to have a reagent at all. It's not really expensive, and it hasn't really been a problem, like I said, but... I don't know why they require anything at all. It's like the only thing that you require outside of arena for PvP. Seems like a bit of an oversight, but pretty minor. Anyway guys, I just wanted to make this video to kind of inform you if you were interested, wondering why I'm just randomly uploading a bunch of arena clips from this game. So if you were curious, like I said, it's really non-committal. You don't have to commit a lot of time or do a bunch of PvE or anything. You level for a few hours and then dive right into PvP on an even playing field. So. If you're interested, give it a shot. Not a big commitment.
Anyway, thanks for watching my crap. As always, guys, appreciate you. Peace out.